Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Shuko Statistical Lecturing Series. And in this video, we are still in this chapter, talk about the random variables and the layer distributions. And um, so in this video, last video, last lectures, we talk about is a joint, the PDF, the CDFs, right? So now we're going to talk about the marginal distribution and the conditional distribution. So what is the marginal probability distribution? What is the conditional PDF, CDF? So we're going to talk about the marginal distribution and the conditional distribution for both discrete random variable and the continuous random variable. Then the last things in uh, this, um, lecture, we're going to talk about it. how do we see the, the random variable, they are independent here. So we're going to divide uh, this topic, the marginal distribution, the conditional distribution, and the independences into uh, two videos. And so to go over the topic here. Okay, so let's take a look. What is the, you know, the basically we're going to talk about the discrete uh, and the, the continuous random variables, but uh, the, they are very similar. The discrete, you just uh, use the summation and uh, the continuous, you just use the integrations here, okay? So let's go ahead and start. Okay, so let's take a look. What is the marginal distribution? So, I think uh, you should still remember, right? So when we talk about the joint distribution, so it's the f of x, y here. So what is the marginal? That means now, you know, I only want to take a look at one random variable again. So I have the joint here. So that when the x and the y have a two, so if I want to only look the one variable, so what I need to do is here, they say, hey, you just use this uh, probability distribution you just add up the y values for all the x values. Now you will get the x as the marginal. So the same way, if you want to get the marginal for each y, that means only for the y, then what you do here, you just summarize the value of the x for your joint so here. So this is what we you know, change from the joint to the each individual marginal. So the marginal doesn't have to be just by uh, one variable so here. Of course, you hear the, this definition since we only have two variables. So the marginal, of course, is one. So but for the marginal could be, if you have x1, x2, x3, then you can find the marginal just for x1 and x2. That means you need to add up what? x3 here, right? So that's why the marginal can be applied. This, this concept can be applied to the many um, different uh, uh, like the variables here. It doesn't have only to be, you know, like uh, two variables. Okay, so now let's take a look at this uh, examples here. So this is the one we did this example in the from the previous uh, lectures right from the previous video so i'm going to not going to calculate the probability again so i'm just going to use the results if you don't remember then go back to review these uh, examples here okay so you hear they said uh, two cap two caplets are selected and random from the bottles and the little bottle has three aspirin two sedative and four laxative caplets here X and Y, respectively, the number of aspirin and the sedative caplets, including the, these two caplets drawing from the bottle. Then I want to find the probability distribution of X alone, right? So I want to find X alone and Y alone, okay? That means uh, I need to find the, you know, the marginal distributions here. Okay, so the first is here, let's try Let's try to do, you know, this is a joint distribution we did when we did the previous video, right? So X will be zero, one, two. If you don't remember, you might want to go back to, you know, to review, okay? So in here, we calculate the probabilities one over 16. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not one over 16. So it's one over six here. 
So this is one over six, and this is one third, and this is one over 12. And then this is two nine, and this is one six, and this is one over 36. So if you remember, this is what we did. We try to, you know, we talk about the topics about the joint you know, the distribution functions, right? So you remember from the previous videos here. So now, what is the marginal? Remember, if you want to find the marginals, right? You want to add Y, right? So in here, I know my X here, right? So my X here have how many value here? Zero, one, and the two, right? So I know if I try to do my marginal distribution that means now i'm only going to look for the x here right so that means my px so my x value only can be zero one two right that's what is the one single random variable so probability distribution if you remember from our other sections here so then based on this since here that means i need to do what i need to add up Right, I need to add up all the y value. This is y, so I need to add up. So in here, that means this is one six two nine one over thirty. Okay, this is one over thirty six. Okay, so it's one over thirty two. So let's do. Okay, so I don't remember. So do not remember correct. So it's one over thirty six. All right, so. Now, if you add up, I already did. So this is a five over 12, right? And then this is a one over what? One over two. And then this is a what? One over 12 here. Okay, so this is, okay, so this is what we call is the Y probability distribution, X probability distribution, right? So this is the marginal for X is a five over 12, one over two, and the one over 12, correct? Okay, so now the same thing, if I want to find the probability distribution for the y's here, so if I want to find the probability distribution function for the y, okay, that means uh, I am looking for the y is here, right? So how do I do that? So it's the same thing, so, you know, I need to add up what? I need to add up all the x's here, right? So now you added it up. So what is this one will give you? This one will give you seven over the 12, and this is a seven over 18, and this is one over 36 here. So that's why my color coding here, right? So this is the y probability distribution. So the way you write it is y is zero, one, two here. So seven over 12 and the seven over 18 and there's one over 36. One of the quick way to check to see if it's correct or not is if you add all this because if this is a probability distribution, it has to be what? So it has to add to what? Equal to one. So if you add it, you find it, yes, it is uh, added to one. So the same way for the y margin is added to one. So you know you did the marginal distributions correctly. So remember, right? So probability distribution doesn't matter. You have one variable, two variables, three variables. They have to satisfy some basic you know, the criteria, right? So the one of them you check is when they add it up, it has to be one. So you know you did your marginal correctly. Okay, so now let's take a look see here. The second one, let's try to do it more times here. So given the joint probability distribution, f of x, y is x, y, z, one, o, a, x equal to one, two, three, y equal to one, two, three, z equal to one, two. So for this one here, it's very difficult to, for us to construct a table with three variables. So we, we need to use our understanding about what is the marginal again, right? Okay, so the here, so the first thing they say is, so I'm going to find the joint marginal distribution of X and Y. Okay, so in here you see here, right? 
I have three variables. Like I said, the marginal doesn't have to be a single variable here, right? So they can have the marginal for only x and y. This is the, you know, the, you know, this is the joint for x, y, z. So remember, if uh, I want to find the marginal of x, y, which one I need to add? Which variable I need to add up? So we need to add a what? We need to add the z's, right? So we need to add the z. Now we add the z out. So that's how to get the joint marginal for x, y, z. Okay, so let's take a look here, right? So this is m of x, y. That's the marginal of the x, y, z here. So the marginal of x, y, z will be like, uh, let's take a look here. Okay, so now we need to add a z's, right? So z could be one and two. So let's take a look here. So when x z equal to one, what I have here, we we'll have one over eight x y, right? Times one will be itself. And then I have when z is equal to two, what I have here, we we'll have one over eight then x y, and what is the z value is two, right? So that's what, uh, you know, when you add this up, so what do you have here? So you have x, y to the 36, all right. So then this is, you know, when you write the marginal, you need to always write the domains, right? So this is a one, two, three, y is equal to one, two, three. Now in here, you add up you add out the z, right? Because you add z here, right? So you add z in order to get the, you know, the distribution, the marginal distribution for the xy here, right? So now for this one here, let's take a look at the second part. We want to find the joint marginal distribution of x and z here. Okay, so now let's take a look. X and Z, that means which variable you need to add and add that variable out, you need to add what? You need to add the Y out, right? Okay, so now let's take a look at what is the marginal here. So the marginal is F of X, Y. Now I'm going to add the Y. Y has one, two, three, right? So the first one is 108. X times Z times one, because Y equal to one. Then you plus the 108, X times Z times two, plus XZ times Y equal to three, the 108, correct? Okay, so now if you add this up, and then your marginal will be XZ 18, so here. Okay, to simplify that, of course, so what is your x domain? X domain is one, two, three. Then z is equal to what? Z is equal to one, two. Correct? Okay, so now, now let's take a look at the last one. See here, the last one, they say, I want to find the marginal distribution only for the x here. Okay, so let's find, we can do it. So if you only want to find the x, which one you want to add it out? So you want to add out what? Y and Z, right? You want to get rid of these two so you can only have the marginal for the x. So, okay, so this is my marginal x here. So let's see here. Y is one, two, three, and Z is one, two. So how many different combination I have? I have six, right? So here, this is how you write it. So this is 108, then the x, the first one's here, one times z, so it's one times one. Then plus x, 108, y equal to one, z equal to two, right? So now plus x times y equal to two, z equal to one, so 108, then plus x, y equal to two, and the z equal to two, and this is 108. Then plus x times y equal to three, z equal to one, 108, plus x, y equal to three, z equal to two, 108, right? So you add the x and the z. So let me color coding for you guys. So the yellow is y, right? 
and the name, the blue is these, right? So that's why you add all these different combinations and you will get the marginal. So let me write down the final answers here. So here, this is x equal to what? Equal to six. So not the x equal to six, it's the marginal distribution is x over six, then the x equal to one, two, three. So right, that's the domain of the, this marginals here. Okay, so you get that. Okay, so now we did a two examples about the, you know, we did a two examples about the discrete. So now let's take a look at another two examples. How do I find the marginal distribution if the random variable is uh, continuous here? All right, so now let's uh, take a look here. Okay, so the marginal densities, right? So here, let's take a look at the definition first. So they say the marginal densities here is the is a continuous random variables here. So we have the joint distribution. So if you want to find the marginal for x, just like we did a discrete, you add up y. So right now, what do you need to do here? You integrate y, correct? So that's what is dy means, right? You integrate out the y. So the same thing, if you want to find the marginal for y, which variable you add up for the discrete case, you add up x. So for the continuous case, what you do here, you integrate that out. Okay, so now, this is, like I said, uh, the continuous and the discrete, they are the same things here, right? It's just why you use, you use integration, why you use summations here. Okay, so now I want to find the marginal density, right? So right now, for the continuous, we don't call the distribution function, we call the probability density function, the PDS, right? Okay, so now let's take a look. All right, so the, if I want to find the G of X, okay, that means I'm on, I want to find the marginal, or, you know, maybe let's just use the same notation we did before, let's use the marginal here, right? So the marginal of X is here. Okay, so remember the marginal of X, I need to integrate what? I need to integrate Y, right? So this is two third, and uh, this is X plus two Y. So what I'm integrating? Integrating dy, right? So I'm integrating dy because I'm making the x. Now the dy, then you need to look where to integrate. You need to find the dy's ranges here. Is what here is zero and the ones here. So when you integrate the dy, remember then which one will be the constant. That means x is going to be the constant, right? Like I said, this is a statistic class. It's not the integration class. So I'm not going to teach you how to integrate, but uh, like in here, I just do an example to refresh your memories here. So now in here, this is a two third, right? So you, you have the two third x. And because two third of the x is a constant, so you integrate with y, so it will be the two third x, y. and uh, plus, I can put it a two third outside, then plus two y. So what is the y integration? Is y square over what? Over two, right? And then you put a what is upper bound and the lower bound. So you can simplify this a little bit. So this is a two third x y plus y square. Then you put a zero one. So you put the one, Okay, so you put the one in there, so what you have, you have a two third x plus ones, right? Then minus, when you put the y equal to zero, what happened here is zeros here. So your marginal here is a two third x plus one, right? So this is the marginal for x. Of course, you need to write down what is the x's domain is from the zero to ones here, clear? All right, so that's why when you integrate, so that's why when you integrate the y, 
the x is a constant, right? So that's why you got a y and a y squares here. You just use the simple integrations here. Okay, let's take a look here. If I want to find the marginal density for y, okay, so marginal density for y, that means I need to integrate my, this is a two third, this is x plus two y. So if I want to integrate, so what I need to integrate? dx, right? So if I want to add it out to get y, I need to add the x out. So it's an integrate out. So if you integrate the dx, I need to find where is my x domain it's from zero to one. Okay, so very good. So now we say this is a zero one. So let's do the integration one more time. So this one's here, right? So because I'm integrated to x, so which one is a constant? Y going to be constant, right? So let's take a look at this two thirds is a constant that we put out. So what is the X integration going to be what? Two of what? X what? Two of the X squares, right? And then for two Y, so what are you going to become two Y's here? Remember, Y is a constant, right? So this is will be the two X Y. Okay, so then you put the upper bound and the lower bound. So here, this will be two third, right? So when x equal to one, what you have here, when x equal to one, you will have one half plus two y here, correct? Okay, so you have one half plus two y, then you minus zeros, right? So now if you simplify a little bit, and uh, you use distributive properties here, so you will get a, this is one third and this is one plus four y's here. So this is your marginal. Of course, don't forget to write it out, huh? you know, the, the y, you know, the domains here. See here, it's a very similar, right? So it's kind of like the continuous, you use integration and the discrete, you use the summation. Okay, now let's take a look. Huh? Last examples in this video, and then we're going to talk about the conditional probability distribution in the next videos here. Okay, so now this one's here, we have three random variables here. Okay, and uh, so in here, the first we need to find, they want us to find the two things here. So the first thing is here, they want to find the marginal density for x1 and x2. Then the second part, they want to ask find the marginal density of x1 alone. So it's just like we say here. So if you want to find x1, x2, so which one you need to integrate? Which variable you need to integrate it out? You need to integrate x2, right? Okay, so now let's take a look here. So this is the marginal x1 and the x3. So in here, this is x1 plus x2, then this is e to the negative x3. So like we say, I need to integrate out what? x2s, right? So in here, I'm going to do the dx2, correct? It's the same idea, like we do the discrete. If you want to find the marginal x1, x3, you need to integrate uh, the x3 out x2 out here. Okay, so now be careful, right? So if I want to integrate the x2 out, what are the constants? This is a constant, right? This is a constant. The only variables is x2 because I'm integrating x2. And don't forget, if I integrate x2, what is my domains? The up bound, lower bound is zero and one here. Okay, so now let's try to integrate so this one's here, if I integrate, so this will be x1, x2, plus two, x2 square, and e to the negative x3, right? And the zero, one. So remember, zero, one is to what? To the x2, here, right? Because all the others are constant. Okay, so now let's put it back here. So for x2 equal to one, so I have here x1 plus one half 
e to the negative x3. Because e to the negative x3 is a constant, I don't need to worry. Then you plug the zero layer, you minus zero. So this is, uh, so that's why your marginal, this is x1 plus one half e to the negative x3, right? So this is the marginal. So what is the x2, x3? x1, x3, so you need to write the domains, right? x1 is about 0 to 1, then x3 is greater than 0. Cool? Okay, so now the next thing is here we are going to do is uh, I want to find the marginal for x1. So if you want to find the x1, which one you need to integrate? I need to integrate out of what? x2 and x3, right? Okay, so now let's write it. Okay, so now in here, that means my marginal of x1, maybe let me write a little bit up so I have more space. Okay, so let's see here. This is the marginal of x1. So remember, I need to integrate it out both, right? So I write down my joint, so it's x1 plus x2. And this will be e to the negative x3. Now I need to integrate dx2, dx3, right? If you integrate dx2 first, so your limits here has to be x2. So it's from 0, 1, right? So just like we learn in the calculus here, be careful. So this is 0, 1. Now your next thing is you integrate it out is x3 here. So you need to write the x3. So what is x3's limit? x3's limit is 0, 3, a 0 infinity, right? So that because it's just 0 is greater than 0, so this is 0 to infinity here. Correct? See that this is x3. Okay, so this is x3 limit. Okay, so now let's do the, this one more time. So be careful, right? So you need to integrate one variable at a time. So the first inside, this is dx2, you need to integrate the first. So when dx2, what are the constants? x1, x3 is a constant, right? So you integrate the dx2. So you still have this out layer integration. Let me put a further out here. So maybe I have more space. Okay, so here, go back here, right? Okay, so you still have the zero to infinity, right? So x2 is the variable. So you get uh, x1, x2 plus x2 square over two, the whole thing e to the negative x3, right? Then you put uh, your zero, one, then the dx3, okay? So you need to substitute uh, to the upper bound and the lower bound. So this is zero to infinity, one. So this will give you x what, x2, right? So, the, so this will be, uh, x2 is a one, so it's x1 is here, right? So, okay. so it will give you the x1 plus one half. Remember x3 is still a constant, so it's x3, then minus zero. Now, then you need to integrate it again. So now this is x3, right? So which variables here? This is the variables, right? All the others are the constant. So this one will give you, so this will be the x1 plus one half is just a constant. When you integrate, this will give you e to the negative x3. Right, so now you put a zero to infinity. So remember this lower bound and the upper bound is for what? It's for x3 here, right? So be careful about your algebra and then you will find this, this is x1 plus one half. So this is the marginal for x1 here. Of course, x1 is from zero to one here. All right, this is how do we find for a given PDF and how do we find a marginal, right? So remember, if you want to find the marginal of x1, then you either add all the other numbers out or you integrate that, that variable out, right? The concept is quite simple.
All right. Okay, so that's it. And uh, then our next video we're going to talk about is the conditional PDF. That is also it's a very, very interesting topic here. But uh, if you learn from the probability unit, if you if you had a good foundation in the probability unit, then the next video should not be any trouble at all. Okay, so that's it. And uh, then I will talk to you in our next video. Okay, bye.